more news items coming in having to do with, some of them are already separated. What we're talking about, with no offense to our barnyard friends, referring to the collective intelligence of humanity, sometimes as a herd, as a herd. But the fact that there is a genetic, organic intelligence that covers all of humanity. And there were several items that seemed to have come in that some, somebody pulled out from the back. Uh, let's see. I'll just read a couple of them and see what turns up. It says, if a man feels closer to some group, any group, organization, institution, the collective thinking, but any group is the way it seems. If he feels closer to any group than he does himself, he does not have much of a self. The ordinary cannot abide having where they live described. To have a choice, to have a mind is to have a choice. You can either choose this or you can choose that. As long as you will accept neighboring cows, your peers, part of the collective. Neighboring cows staying on your foot and you take it as being proper, if not downright beneficial, then you'll always have a dream. The dream being that someday you may get out of the herd. The way that most men know that they are thinking is the fact that they have a great inclination and urge to go, ouch. <laughs> Those not enamored by the idea of a greater intelligence after death, which I'll go ahead and translate, I'm sure you've got it. That's all ideas of paradise. Those of a less sophisticated nature than obviously you people believe that paradise would be something greater at a lower level. That is, well, roofers think, instead of it saying idea of greater intelligence after death, roofers think uh, greater sex. Beer, maybe 20% alcohol. <laughs> but I'll assume, that we, I'll assume that just relatively speaking that we are addressing, that we're all dancing here with more <clears throat> sophisticated people. And so this is, this is simply a higher a more expansive description of what people normally think of as some kind of better life after death, greater intelligence after death, which is what they're all describing. Those not enamored by the idea of a greater intelligence after death, that is, they won't put up with that, they can always, right now, presently avail themselves of drugs, technology. I like virtual reality, the new one. Technology, and even more, more, Immersion in followism. A cow. We're using that again. No offense. I know all of us have friends of the bovine persuasion. But uh, as magnanimous as I'm sure you people are, if the animal world wants to use humans in their parables. I'm sure, wouldn't we all agree? We got no, you know, I got no objection to that. So I just want to understood that we are not making fun of our brown eyed fellow creatures. So I'm using the item I'm translating a cow as like a regular member of the collective of in, collective intelligence of humanity that we have in some of these News items find, found it referred to as the herd. Okay, a cow with a ticket is going somewhere whether it thinks so or not. Oh, another, more animals. A man with rats in his mind is hard pressed to put out effective traps inasmuch as such devices are normally designed and come from the pro-rodent society. <laughs> so let's see. Intellectually speaking, the collective will always cut themselves some slack since that's all they have. Okay, are we ready? There's a bunch of news items from last night, but that's one of the things about some of these coming from, not that all the items originated there, but at least the uh, wire service hooked up to southwest Antarctica. Because if you got any idea in a sense of geography, you are extremely challenged 
to identify where Southwest Antarctica is. Now you can, and I personally, which doesn't prove anything, but I have never thought about it. Surely when you're there, you've got to identify it some way. But as far as just staying here now and picturing and trying to describe to somebody, if you told somebody or somebody told you, I'm going to meet you with that check that Publishers Clearing House has been looking for. I got your name on it. And all you got to do is meet me in Southwest Antarctica. And you think, gotcha. And they say, we'll give you, we'll give you a month to find us. And you think, all right, Southwest. And they say, right. You know, everything can be divided in three dimensions. Everything can be divided into four quadrants. I will meet you with a check in Southwest Antarctica. Any of you who can picture a little bit spatially, trying to locate Southwest Antarctica. At any rate, that's one reason some of us enjoy that machine in the back. This one is just more or less <laughs> contemporaneous, spatially and chronologically. Well, spatially at least, because it's here. But that other machine, which is where I think these came from. All right. So, where to start? Where to start? Well, I guess we could start something with some items, several in the last couple of days, related to this. Might as well, because you always run the risk with this one of offending people. And there is nothing more enjoyable to watch than a cow with a red ass. <laughs> if a man feels closer to some group than he does to himself, he doesn't have much of a self. When he was speaking about the collective intelligence of humanity, all ordinary sane people actually are subject to this. At your most rational level, a little humor. <laughs> Your parents, your peers, humanity, the sane, those that stabilize, those that are the bourgeoisie in the most positive sense of the word, of the collective consciousness of humanity, civilization itself. Those, that, and of course everyone in there, they don't think of themselves as being part of a herd. I mean, that's not the first way that people, sane people, think about themselves. They think about themselves, that's why the word I rolls so trippingly from the tongue, and why everyone loves just the sound of it in your head. I. I mean, it just almost makes you want to kind of shiver. So, if you ask somebody, everyone's going to say, in fact, the more sane and civilized they are, as a matter of fact, because uh, relatively speaking, as you might know, the less, just in a relative sense, the less civilized right now are people on this planet, whether it be in this part of the world or in some other part of the world, the more, relatively speaking, the more that they do identify themselves with the group, with their tribe, with their family. Uh, it's not been that long, according to anthropology, if you want to hear it that way. I already told you the truth, but if you need proof. Uh, they were still finding in your lifetime, uh, supposedly, unless they were just trying to get their dissertation finished, that they were still locating small pockets of people here and there on some island, up in you know, the frozen tundras or in the burning tropic islands of people that almost had no word for I, that their whole feeling was they couldn't really separate themselves except from the tribe, which is not anything backward and it's not anything irrational because I would suggest to you right after the Garden of Eden kind of thing, right after man became conscious, right after man began to speak, his first feeling was that's why Adam and Eve were such an item I mean, so hot, because the first thing, as soon as people were no longer simply animals and could talk, the first thing they looked for was a friend, not just sex, that's good enough, but everybody wanted to grab somebody. If they're just two people, I guarantee you, Adam and Eve almost hugged themselves to death. <laughs> now, they could have been hugging themselves to death, that is, you know, doing the wild thing before they learned how to talk, before the forces went, you know, let there be words, or whatever it says. <laughs> I know what it says, but I'm telling you what it really said. It's not that the gods and all went, let there be light, or let there be you know, television, or let there be electricity. What it really said was, let there be words. Anyway, they could have been hugging and really doing it before then, but once they learned to talk, the hugging took on a whole new level. As everybody wanted suddenly friends, everybody wanted a collective, because suddenly everyone realized they were naked. 
That is, everyone was stripped all over. They could have been naked physically to start with, in the same way that cows and dogs are naked. But once they started talking, they realized, hey, we're really naked. <laughs> that is, I've got this thing hanging out. And, and, and you didn't have to look below somebody's waist like, yeah, I know. No, they suddenly got a new thing hanging out, waving in the breeze, and they don't know how to control it. And it seems like it may be the original paradigm for Swiss cheese. The wind blows through it, and you don't know what to do with it. It's like a wind sock full of holes. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I can assure you that in that sense, whether it took a moment, an hour, years, millions of years, that at first... I was trying to show you there's, there's nothing really wrong. There's nothing anomalous about people identifying with groups because people identified themselves with a group if it was just one more person, Adam and Eve, just take that mystical example. They identified themselves with a group immediately before they did themselves. It was like a great fright that suddenly you could say, I. That is, suddenly you could talk and people went, I, and it just you know, scared the hell out of them. Trust me. Oh, don't trust me. You just can't remember. Maybe some of you can but as soon as you started to talk and everybody jumped around, it scared the hell out of children. <laughs> scared is not the word, but I don't have time to get an out of universe dictionary for you. Everybody wanted a friend quick. <laughs> they wanted somebody. So then the stage is set, and it goes through the period that people identify themselves with a group. There's nothing wrong with it. It is simply a progression. And it is still true today that the sane of the world identify themselves. They will insist, I want you to understand, if you ask somebody, the more civilized, the more educated, in the ordinary sense they are, the more that they will insist, yes, I am a person. In fact, didn't I give you my card? I am Dr. Fred Zimmerman. <laughs> Zimmerman. And they will insist. And you can say something like, uh, are you in a relationship to the Zimmermans right side of Boston? And a man will begin, he'll say, doctor, psychology? Yes. Harvard? Yes. As soon as a man gets through trying to say I, which is almost perfunctory, it's just like a handshake. But after that, the sane really identify themselves more basically with some group, whether it turns out to be their educational group, their racial group, their religious group, their family, their hometown, if they really get desperate, their nation. If they're really desperate, well, not only desperate, but dangerous when they start that, that's when you go, well, doctor, it's good to meet you, but i got to get out of here. <laughs> so, what I want to understand, there's nothing funny, but if it's your family, your own parents, which have got to be the sanest people in the world, they could be gr very chauvinistic, very faithful to the family tradition, to the family background, German, Irish, Jewish, to the religion, Catholicism, it may be super important to your mother, let's say, or your father. And they could be just the epitome of sane people. That's not the question. That is the stability of the collective intelligence of humanity. But now we're just talking amongst ourselves, not about your family or civilization. But if a person feels closer to some group than he does himself, then as far as having a self, that is, as far as having any individuality, uh, to be charitable, the question or the premise is problematic. Now, a man can certainly say he's an I, that I am somebody. I'm not just my religion. I'm talking about ordinary people again. And he can say it. And he could be a friend of yours. He could be a relative of yours. He can say that. But insofar as ever being able to think independently, it's simply a fact. To what degree, if you want to look at it mathematically, to whatever degree that every time you think something, or every time you hear something and you intellectually react to it, and you do it on the basis of, well, and you don't necessarily translate in these words, but what you're doing is you hear something said, or you hear something, some group of people have proposed something, and it's like, let's just take your Catholic background, let's just make up one. And it's like it bounces off your brain, and what you're doing in essence is saying, well, you know, a good Catholic cannot, I cannot accept that. You do not necessarily think that way, I know. We can say you do, and a man could say it aloud that way. But it happens whether you say the words or not, because it is simply the partisan, belligerent, well, it's the partisan machinery of the mind in operation. That what you think, whether you put the words or not, is what you're thinking, is what your genes think. 
you are thinking what, what some group thinks, which is fine unless you're trying to think for yourself. Then the thing is, it's not that being a Catholic or it's not that being that, well, my viewpoint is more Mediterranean. I don't know. Us Italians and Greeks, I don't know. It's the fire in the blood. When I hear stuff like that, I think differently. I, my wife, my first wife, was Swedish. I don't know. I mean, she was a fine girl. You know, <laughs> really. But, you know, kind of cool and aloof, and it's just not the same. <laughs> like, to whatever degree that you accept it, and those of you who are good, to the same degree, if you reject it, it doesn't matter. But to whatever degree that your thinking is still coming off the menu of the collective, to whatever degree, to that same degree, you have cut a hole in the possibility of you ever thinking for yourself. Because it's not that any group anywhere that they're thinking is wrong. That's not the point. Because even if it's wrong now, it'll be right tomorrow. And if it's wrong now, it was right yesterday, according to somebody. But to that same degree that you feel identified to that group. And you don't have to badmouth a group. You don't have to say, well, I in some way have cut myself off from my background. That's insanity. You can't do it to begin with. And if you really tried to verbally, again, if you need any evidence, people who try to do that, the rest of the people do consider them, if not insane, extremely weird. There's something wrong with it. If you start going around saying, well, I've decided that uh, if I'm ever going to think for myself, I come from an uh, Irish Protestant background, decent people, hardworking, and I decided screw all that. I'm not going to work. I'm going to hold up fruit stands, and every time I see a church, I'm going to spit at it. Uh, anytime my parents bring up any idea about goodness or religion, morality, I'm going to say, hush up, don't talk to me. If you did something, that is absolutely insane. That is, it's unprofitable. And that is not the way humanity operates at the civilized level. But now into a secret niche where someone is trying to actually think for themselves to whatever degree you are still identified with any group to that same degree, whatever, you know, if it's two inches, then you've got two inches cut out of any possibility of you ever thinking. That's just it. That's the way it goes. Because you're going to have to say, all right, we've got 100% possibility of me thinking. Or we've got a foot. I've got 12 inches worth of thinking in my life. If six of them are taken up with thinking like a Catholic, if another two are taken up thinking like an Italian, and then another one and a half is taken up by thinking that you say, well, I, I listen to some of what's going on now, but not, you know, I'm also a man. That, that, that enters into what I say, all this kind of new stuff about being sensitive and being a new kind of guy. Hey, you know, it's enough that I'm Protestant and Italian, but I'm also a man. So we got another, you know, inch taken out. So what we got now, you know, whatever I said, six or eight, nine inches taken out. And then, of course, you can always get into age. You can say, well, used to I could, I could stand some of these wild ideas, but hell, I'm down near 40 now. And so let's say that's another inch. You have to like, you know, let's say 10 or 11 inches out of 12 inches worth of possible thinking. Again, I'm being charitable because with everybody else, the 12, the full 12 inches, the full 100% is taken up if you're sane. That is, your cell where you're locked in is absolutely filled from every corner, top to ceiling, with jello. <laughs> there is no room. If there was any room, you'd, you'd be to that same degree, you would be very uncertain. You'd probably be seeking help. You'd be asking, to, you know, would you send down the chaplain or would you send down the prison psychiatrist? I, I, I'm beginning to feel shaky. You know, like there's, a, there's an inch of breathing room in my cell. Every now and then I look around, I don't know what to think. Help, help. So, assuming you see all that, which I'm sure you do, then there is nothing amiss that contrary, you're, the way you think should be completely tied to, it's not just one group, you've got a full spectrum, you've got a full little supermarket, you know, religion, race, sex, age, the way you look, degree of talent. I mean, you can throw anything you want to, but as long as you feel like that I, you know, I'm me, I'm somebody important, I got my own cards, and I got my name sewn in my underwear, <laughs> but I'm not just me. Of course, that almost makes you want to stand up and sing No Man is an Island, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Except for those of you, every time we tried that, I remember last time somebody kept saying No Man was a peninsula. And ruined it. <laughs> but the ordinary cannot think without identifying. Not in just some cocktail psychological way. 
that you actually, when I say identify, you don't have to think about it. The way you do think comes from some group. If you take, if the severity of it, if the vicinity of it, if the seriousness of it overweighs the way you feel about you, which, one more time, with the ordinary, that's ordinary. And it's proper. It's not a choice they have. Contrary, if they tried to make such a choice, they would be coming apart if they were ordinary, if that's all they had. So it's not that it's something that the ordinary should be struggling against. If anything, they're pushing forward and forward to it. Every time that there seems to be a change in the, they normally refer to it as social structure and et cetera, but it's always here. Such as if, if we would say, which there's always social critics somewhere at every time and place, if we said that right now, uh, since we're here, where are we? Yeah. Not Brazil, America. That if America is becoming less religious, and somebody said that, and if there was some validity to it, it does not simply leave a hole, because if it does that, then it begins to fill up with what they'll describe as something else. Well, at least we're becoming more of secular humanist. Because it cannot just leave a hole. And if it did, that is not progress. If you were, if it was an ordinary person listening to this, making any sense of it, they would say, well, the further we get away from being tied intellectually and theoretically to groups of people like church, the better off we'd be. No, 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 no. Things would be falling apart. And they can't see it. If you won't find it of interest, they see it retroactively because they will turn right around and say, no, describe. It's accepted fact, for instance, now that the Roman Empire fell apart, amongst others, because of an absolute breakdown of morality and religion, just fell apart. But they can't look right now and apply that same sort of standard, which that's not what happened, but they can't even see that happening now. If it was happening. They say it is, but then they can't see. Well, wait a minute. It should always be falling apart, and it's not. Because collectively, the cell does not have empty spaces. It is absolutely filled with water. Floor to ceiling, in case jello threw everybody. <laughs> All right, full of air. Full of air? How about that? If the cell equals 12 inches worth of possible thinking, <coughs> <clears throat> there are molecules of oxygen or air in every corner of that cell. If they're not, which by the way they're not, to go ahead and tell you the truth, or there are little places where they're not, and that's where you find the nutty people. That's where you find people who are not in the mainstream of humanity. But generally speaking, in the collective cell, all possible space is filled. And so it's not a matter that there would be some progress if, wait a minute, part of this space is being taken up, according to what you're talking about, a large portion of the space here in the room holding the collective intelligence of humanity is <clears throat> under the control of, under the direction of, religion. Right? Okay. And I say that we'd be better off without so much religion. But if it's simply that you said, all right, let's say it's taking up 40% uh, of the room, and we cut out 10% of that, we're diminishing it. And the person said, that would be progress. Uh-uh. Then you'd have 10% of the cell, then they couldn't breathe good. Or individually speaking, that'd be areas in the cell that 10% of the time when you'd walk over there, you couldn't breathe. You understand? It can't just go away. So the problem, that, what would appear to be, if I was putting it that way, that there was a problem, which we've already established is not, but if ordinary people thought, well, there is a problem, we'd be better off if we were not all identified with some group of people that was controlling our thinking. At the ordinary level, no. It's not going to happen, but if it could happen, it wouldn't be progress. It'd be involution. It'd be dangerous. But back to individuals. Uh, evidently, nobody got offended yet, but most of you are able to hold your tongue until after. I just get these... There's one note. It's almost archetypical. It was on notebook paper written in pencil. But at any rate, I know it's not, at least you're pretending not to be offended, but you understand that there is absolute good cause for ordinary people, if they were listening to this, to feel offended, which is why you'd be foolish to say it, to say if a man feels closer to some group than he does himself, he doesn't have much of a self. If you're ordinary, if it was your mother or father sitting here, your brother or sister, your best friend out in the collective, and they heard this, they would be very well within their rights. If I pushed it or if they heard all this, 
not just within their rights, but I would expect them to be somewhat miffed. Like, I don't like the sound of that. What's he got against us? What's he got against being, you know, homey? Community-minded. Nothing. And I've already pointed out. And if you said otherwise, then uh, it's Daffy Duck time for you anyway. Because there's nothing to say. There's nothing to prove. But if you're trying to think for yourself, all of that is, maybe we just go ahead and say irrelevant. That's known as a New York waste of time. <clears throat> the ordinary cannot abide having where they live described. There was another item that came in the other night that said, uh, well, some, some well-bred cows do not like being referred to as such. And in fact, the more well-bred they are, the less they like it. Talking about cows and et cetera. Let's stay with the idea of the collective. And even people who, since we still have to have time zones and there are different latitudes, that there are still people on this planet that are more collective-minded than others are. Let's say that the Western world right now, the Western world, generally speaking, let's say is more individual-minded, less collective-minded than parts of the Middle East, the Far East, parts of South America. Just other parts of the world, the particular places of no importance. If you go to an area where people are more collective minded, in other words, less civilized right now, if we went to some place that the people were less civilized, no offense to them, but they're just living under more primitive village, uncivilized conditions, and you talk to them on the basis of you guys are not much of an individual. If you're not trying to be offensive, you try to talk to them about uh, how important individuality here is in the village. If you found the right place, and I don't mean you have to look specifically for some example I'm conjuring up, I'm just saying if you could still find this area still excellent on this planet where they could describe it, they would in the best way they could describe too that, you know, individuality is no big deal here. And they could describe why, let's say, or I'll do it for them. They could say, well, we got nothing against it, but my God, we're living almost at a subsistence level. We have to look after each other. We have so many droughts. We don't have the technology we hear you guys do. And we have to be more community-minded. It is, or we'd all die. We can't have a whole lot of inner tribal rivalries. And we have to cooperate. And so, in a sense, we, we feel, all of us, and they would all say, yeah, that in a sense, we're all individuals. And I like him, and he likes me. And we've all been friends. We grew up. But when it comes down to it, when push comes to shove, if you... Write that down. Boy, that's neat. <laughs> Tell me I can't plagiarize. When it gets down to it, they would say the tribe itself, us collectively, must come first. That's the only way we've survived. All right, so if you tried to refer to them with no offense, if they heard this and you started talking about cows, that well, some well-bred cows do not like to be referred to as such, instead of cows, again, since you know there's no offense meant to start with anyway, it's just little allegories, changing the way to speak. If you spoke about them collectively, if you referred to them as herds and cows, they would be less offended than a man who is over there a don at Cambridge. You understand? They would just simply be less offended. If you talked a little bit about uh, collective and the tribal consciousness and that sort of thing, yeah, yeah. You know, they'd say, well, I just got through 10. You say, well, sometimes we're talking about it and we, we refer to it as people who are part of the collective as cows. And if they understood you weren't offended or trying to be offensive, they wouldn't take offense. They'd go, yeah, you're right in a sense. And they'd all agree. All the sane ones in the village, and of course in a small village, they're all sane. You can think about that. They don't have time. They don't have the ability or the patience or the money to set up a sanitarium over here and help them. Everybody in the village is sane. If you're looking for those who weren't, don't look in the village. At any rate, so they would all agree if, they, if you describe to them what you mean by the cows, they go, yeah, you're right. We are like a herd here. And they get a chuckle out of it. The more well-bred, the further we went from that spectrum into the more civilized, there's a point to this. And the point's in this news item, as a matter of fact, because this item itself is the very thing that people don't want to talk about, and it tells you why. 
the more civilized they are, the less tolerance they have to be referred to as cows. Surely, whether you follow the whole point, I just assume I hadn't lost it yet, if we had people under more tribal conditions, less civilized, they would not be offended if we talked just a little bit to say, well, sometimes when I'm talking like this, I refer to people under your conditions as cows. And they go, yeah, you know. When it comes to it, as desperate as our times get here at times, it's good that we can act like cows, or else we'd be done for. Okay? Take that same thing, and you go to the more civilized areas, and you start talking about herds and cows, and you, and you even start and say, well, I'm speaking allegorically. And you can get people, the civilized, going, well, all right. But you better not do it over once or twice, and you better not look them right in the eye, and you better not start talking a little bit further and say, oh, by the way, have you ever thought about the fact that the only reason an allegory or a parable or a metaphor works at all is because it's based on just doubt and out, blank wall, hard facts? <laughs> then you'd start getting the civilized, the educated, to start going, wait a minute. I hope you're not trying to say what I think you're saying. <laughs> now, yeah, you're, you're, in a sense, all of us living here in England or all of us here just in uh, Chelsea, all of us here, uh, all of us Protestants, the, all of us, we do have to sort of work together, all of us here in the European community. But if you're trying to say what I think you're saying, if you're taking it beyond that level and saying that individually we're all ending up being like cows, and they begin to look at you funny, if not actually get mad. People in educational positions and higher levels in England, I'm not sure would want to punch you in the mouth, or I'm not sure they'd try, but they would begin to get frightened, if not mad, disturbed. You understand? That the more civilized they are, the less tolerance they have at all to start getting close, to talking about herds and cows, I'm going, yeah, 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 and then start to get any impression that it might be more than allegory. Whereas the less civilized, back to my village, assuming they understood, well, they would understand allegory and parable because they would have their own stories. You just have to say, all right, when I talk about cows and herds, it's kind of like what it represents. And the village had to pull together, like you said, and work together as a team. Yeah, 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 or you wouldn't survive, yeah. And so when you talk about cows and stuff, it's not offended, and they go offensive, and they go, well, yeah, you're right, because we do have to operate together. If you even tried to push a little further with them and say, well, do you ever consider that all the allegories and you know, when you call somebody a cow, you know, have you considered the only reason that seems to make sense is it got to be based in reality? And they go, well, yeah, yeah. You can say, I'm talking about really. And they could, they could go far enough to say, well, if what you're trying to say is that there's not all that much difference between us and cows or us and the chimpanzees out here or a pride of lions, well, they don't, they don't really hunt together, but a pack of wild dogs. Uh, if you're saying that there's not really all that much difference between us and them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but back to England, back to New York, back to London, Paris, they will take that kind of allegory about the herd and the collective and the nation and the religion, etc. But you start letting them get any impression, or if you just tried to tell them outright, what if you told them the story that, hey, I just got back from a village uh, in a little island, a little obscure island, and you tell them what I just told you. And when I talked to the people down there, they had stories about that some of their ancestors were wild dogs and or chimpanzees, and we were talking about the collective and how, what a hard time they had and how the owl had to work together, and the guy go, yeah, yeah. You say, in fact, we talked for a while, and uh, one of them, we got talking, and they said, you know, as a matter of fact, there's not really that much of a difference between us and some of the wild animals. Maybe blame it on them. We're still talking to this educated, sophisticated guy in you know, Bucharest. And so he says, all right, yeah, I can hear that. But then you start kind of nudging like, well, hey, if it's true for them, you know, it's got, it's got to be able to be brought over here into the upper eastern Balkan areas, and the man starts thinking, wait a minute, are you inferring that us educated, European, even, even albeit eastern European people, are you, you're not about to say, of course they wouldn't even stoop this low, they couldn't even get these words out, that's why I'm going through this little piece of theatrics, what it is, if they just begin to sense 
much less, you know, don't ever do it. But it's ever again the sense of what you're saying is, hey, it may be true for those people down that island because they can go, you know, that's not completely untoward to say that there's not that big a distinction between them and pack animals, social animals that have to work together, yeah. <laughs> and they start feeling like, wait a minute, you're saying that's almost as closely true and literally, literally true for me, for us here? Uh-uh. Back to the news item that I was repeating from memory. Some well-bred cows do not enjoy being referred to as such. In fact, the more civilized they are, the less tolerance they have for it. Do I have to point out again, the beautiful life does not need local, it does not need ramparts does not need castles. There is its own defense. The closer you get to where a person lives, the less somebody will tolerate hearing it described, which was another item I was getting at. The ordinary cannot abide having where they live described, which is all I've been doing. The less, it says the ordinary. How about the civilized? To put in a degree of it again to try... It's of no great importance operationally, whether we're civilized or not, since we all are here, and you can't go back. But I'm just trying to give you something to get a comparison and go from one foot that evidently you can all follow using some example like a less civilized group of people somewhere that have to identify, would appear to be based upon the physical conditions that they have to identify themselves more as a collective just to physically survive. But those same people, if you tried to say, well, of course, that has no effect on the way you guys think here, right? They'd be able to give you closer to a functional answer. Or put it to you another way, if you said, would you agree that being tied that closely together, that your physical health and continuation of you individually and as a group is tied to the fact of you being able to cooperate and act as a collective? And they want, yes, we've already, you know, we're aware of that. But would you say that, would you agree that that's got to have some bearing on how you think? That's not just the physical cooperation of you acting as almost a physical cohesive unit, that that in some way reflects itself here? They'd have to, in a sense, they'd probably never thought about it that way. But it's, if you put it to them right, they'd have to go, well, hey, you know, you're describing the ground. You're describing the sky. You know, you're describing the obvious. Sure. Try telling that to you. Try telling that to my educated man I just made up. Try telling that. I mean, it'd be bad enough to start hinting for them to get an idea. Wait a minute. You're saying that I'm not much more than an all dressed up, <laughs> fine looking hyena. <laughs> I can pick out anymore. Dog. <laughs> Cow. That would be bad enough. But there was another news item also that evidently nobody brought out. Is the more civilized you are, the less the mind itself, because the more civilized you are in this sense, the more you're operating from here, the more dependence you have on the mind than you do from the line of, say, from the neocortex down. My tribal people, they have to look more to the physical body. Forget the conditions. I know it can be described. Well, they have to because of the conditions where they live. Right. And they live where they are because of the conditions internally. But they have to depend on themselves more physically than a person does in Rome in London, in San Francisco. They have to depend more on this, comparably speaking, than the body, than somebody does under less civilized conditions. The person under less civilized conditions can more readily agree to the fact when you say, boy, if you guys didn't cooperate, if you guys here in the village didn't operate sort of as a collective, physically speaking, you couldn't survive. That's right. And if you got into a little conversation, that's got to have some direct Effect on the way you guys think. Well, yeah, ain't no doubt about that. Grab a guy in San Francisco. And he won't be identifying himself necessarily. Like I said, it's the last ditch stand if he really takes seriously being a Californian or an American. He's first off going to identify himself as, you know, he's probably in the computer business. Or that he's, a, you know, that he's white and he's male and he's Catholic or that kind of thing. 
And so if you say, all right, well, but let's make it, let me make it easier. All right, you're an American, right? Yes, I am. You know, and you're, you speak English and you're part of just the mainstream. Yes, I am. I live here in California. Okay. Uh, to get by in your business, in your field of interest, yes. Even here in the city, you've got to pay taxes and look after your neighborhood, yeah. But just as an American, you understand we all have to sort of work together. The economy is so intertwined. Uh, the tax base is so dependent one aspect of society on another. Yes, yes, yes. In other words, you could get the person here in San Francisco to see that there was an absolute parallel between the physical connections and dependence amongst his collective, the same as there is in that little village of a hundred people, that there is that same thing here in America of 2.5 billion or whatever it is. He'd go, all right, yeah, I can. I can see that. Try and tell the more educated, somebody more dependent on this, then try to do the same thing that I just did the people in the village and say, well, this kind of physical interdependence that we all have, yes, that has got to have some direct, inescapable effect on the way you think, on the collective thinking and then the individual. The more educated in the ordinary sense, the more intelligent in the ordinary sense they are, the more they will begin to resist. Seriously, all you got to do is check with you. You don't have to go all the way to California unless you want to. All you got to do is check with you. They begin to seriously resist. For very good reason, because the intellect in anybody and the intellect in the whole collective intelligence, the whole intellectual body of man would not be progressing if some segment did not believe, were not made to believe that any connection between from the cortex down, from my, my old tribal villages, the little islands I still have down here, they have to believe more and more that there is the most tenuous of connections, just almost nil. Between that, oh, I know if I overeat sometimes and I, I get sleepy when I go back after lunch. I mean, if you're talking about stuff like that, or I can't get drunk. I can't get hung over and go to a big meeting tomorrow. I mean, there is that kind of thing, sure. Or if I'm sick, if i got a, the flu, I can't you know, do my work good unless I'm in advertising. That doesn't matter. <laughs> a little humor. <coughs> but if you tried to say, no, 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 no. You know, forget the anecdotal examples because that's always a trap door. If you said, no, nah, the thinking of humanity, of everybody, not just the little islands and villages and you and not just the little islands and villages actually on the other side of the globe, but the physical collection of humanity that is necessary to keep it going at the physical level is directly tied to this. That's when your mind and everybody else's start because it has to. It cannot have where it lives described. No, 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 no. No, it'll say, you're, you're doing all right, but you, you went too far. You're doing all right talking about people in villages and small little groups of people. You know, a few hundred here over in some isolated condition, and they don't have the technology. They're just actually trying to, they have to get up every day and make a living. That, without any doubt, and they can describe it. I'll go ahead and do it, but they can describe it the same way I could, except they come to a different result. What they come to is it proves that I'm wrong. Of course, when you do it, it proves that we're right. That's why you can't prove it to them. But they'd say, wait a minute. What you're describing of more physically inclined, more physically oriented people in the world, they have to work collectively to stay alive, yes. And so without any doubt, their minds, their intellect is tied to that. Because if every day you get up and you're not sure whether you're going to be able to eat today, then my God, it's got to affect you. You wake up, me, I don't have to worry about that, he says, this educated, ordinary guy. You know, I get in the morning, you know, I got pantry, I got more food than I can eat. If, I, you know, if I'm in a hurry, I stop at McDonald's, I can grab something to eat. You don't worry about eating, it's just whether you got the right change to get the drive-in window and I'll have to wait for them to make change. But you're right. If I had to actually get up every day, and as soon as I woke up in the morning, I, did, I had nothing to eat. I'm there in a hut, and I don't even have a, you know, you don't put away, you don't have a larder. If you had one, it'd be empty, because you ate everything you get your hands on yesterday. So you got today, and you got to get out and find food or die. Then my educated, sophisticated person would say, you're right. There is no doubt. Under those conditions, the sanest man in the village, what he thinks is directly tied to that. 
<coughs> I mean, he'll take my side. Yes, you're, no doubt about it. Of course, we can play this old game again. If they were, <laughs> for some reason, thinking along the lines we are, then you'd want to go, well, well, well. Of course, you do that, and they go, start going, well, well, well. Because the mind shuts down. It takes a different direction. That proves what I'm saying from one view, but also proves I'm wrong. It proves what they're saying. Because they're saying, under those conditions, that would be true. But I don't live under those conditions. I am not driven each and every day for, from first thing in the morning that I have got to find something to eat or die, or that I have got to go find a new cave, or we've got to build a whole new village, or it'll start raining, we'll all freeze to death, and we'll die anyway. I don't have to do that. You know, thank God. And so, the physical life of man, collectively, does not affect my mind, my thinking, that much. And they've proved it. I just did it for them because the conditions are not the same. Again, what if in some way uh, something weird got in the water supply and suddenly people in San Francisco or whoever we're talking about begin to think, wait a minute, my mind, a man looks around at the neighborhood, and his contemporaries, not only my mind but everybody around me, our minds are as much affected but what's going on at that little isolated village as it is in the village itself. If that were true, then they would not get up. The intellect collectively would not be progressing and expanding. <coughs> this was, we're still at that news item, if you'd like to hear it again. The ordinary cannot abide having where they live described. It's also part of, if you'd like to tie it back around for a second, and two, one of the purposes of organizations and institutions and humanity being identified themselves and feeling like that they are a part of a larger group. It is like the ultimate continuously available fallback position that you tell somebody if you started trying to, of course somebody could do this, wouldn't do it, but people do it to each other accidentally. It's just part of the interchange of energy. If one guy starts trying to describe to another one where he lives, I assume everybody knows but by me pointing with this finger that I am being allegorical. The ordinary cannot abide to hear where they love described. You do know, no, I'm not talking about, wait a minute, don't you live over right off of Elm Street? No, in fact, right near the corner, huh? In that greenhouse? You, you do know we're talking about something else. If one man, just for whatever accidental reason, began to try and describe to another man where he lives, in other words, he start to actually describe what his nervous system is up to. So for some reason, one guy is almost doing it to another guy. The other man will not tolerate it. And one of the fallback positions is, and let's assume that he is not inclined or not the size to whip up on the guy that's describing where he lives to him, to him and he wants him to stop, if nothing else, assuming he's not going to resort to the John L. Sullivan School of Rationale, <laughs> he will fall back into references and calling upon large groups of his race, his religion, yeah. his ancestors, his family, <laughs> and he starts using that as both, it, it becomes a combination, it becomes a shield, it becomes an uh, explanation, it becomes a rationale. No, 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 no. I, no. I hear what you're saying about me. Some of that may be true, but... And that's when he's fixing to whip out an institution. <laughs> well, hey, I grew, up on, I grew up under a severely restrictive Southern Protestant upbringing. I grew up, uh, uh, I grew up in a one-parent uh, uh, a one, uh, one household. Uh, uh, I used to have Parkinson's. I thought I had Parkinson's disease. My mother had Parkinson's disease for sure. The point is he'll begin deflecting where he lives individually, where he thinks he does. Because if you start describing it, a cow doesn't want to hear that. No, 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 no. And the closer, if it happened in ordinary life, and as I said, it is the only word to call it in a hurry, is accidental. And it does happen. People even play psychological games. It happens sometimes people are drinking or taking drugs. You know, say, hey, what do you really think of me? And people always regret that. <laughs> You know, hey, we've known, we've known each other now for, you know, 10 years or, you know, you know have, a, have a drink. Tell me, tell me the truth. What do you think about me? I mean, tell me the truth. No, everybody always regrets that because, you know, it does not amount to anything objectively significant. 
one person can begin to describe to another person more where they live. And the more that they do it, in a way that they've never done it, the more the other person begins to, I said, the article said, cannot abide it, they begin to resent it. How about that? Don't do, hey, no, 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 no. But if it, if it's under conditions where, of course, drinking now, I'm just trying to give it a slight shift for you to see that this does happen. But under normal conditions, that doesn't happen. Under those conditions, it kept on there drinking. It's probably going out in a fist fight if it's two men. The one you know, finally going to say, well, you know, we just screw you. If that's the way you feel about me, why you why you been playing like you're my friend all these years? <laughs> if it's a man or woman, you know, finally the guy or whoever's doing the talking about, come on, tell me the truth what you think about me. And finally, that one's going to you know, decide, hey, I'm packing my clothes. <laughs> But I want you to see it happens, but that doesn't count because if it happens there, they will end up back in the tribal village normally. It's going to end up that they just part ways. If that is not the case and they're doing it accidentally intellectually, then the other person, rather than resort to fist cuffs, they resort to falling back on their identification with some group. Rather than then them being an individual, the closer somebody is getting to pointing out where you are living individually, then the person that was an individual person that we're not talking about a sophisticated person the more they'll begin to try and pull themselves away from the idea of I which was their normal suit of armor that's the first clothes that they want to put on is yes I am me I may be Catholic or I may be Irish and all that but first off I am me but you start pointing out what me is to somebody accidentally in the case I'm given then the more they begin to move away from this I and it begins to be more like well wait a minute no 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 and if they have to say anything, they begin as an explanation resorting back to the collective intelligence that put them, they think, where they are. Mm -hmm. A cow with a ticket is going somewhere whether it thinks it is or not. A man with a plan. Which is anybody saying, a man with a plan is on the way. But if you're trying to think for yourself, of course, you're on the way to nowhere. But if an ordinary person knew that, hey, I got a plan, but it takes me nowhere, what would that be? Not city. And so everybody has a plan is actually going somewhere in the ordinary. I just wanted to, again, leave on a good positive note in case any of you <laughs> want to return back to your collective roots. Because as long as you think you're going somewhere, even if you're outside, this scenario, if we could step outside the universe and go, everybody that's part of the collective, everybody who just thinks ordinarily, including me at that level, you could say to yourself, you know, the intellectual world is going nowhere. In a sense, you can say the physical world is not going anywhere, but if it was just the physical world, you wouldn't know it, so it wouldn't be worthwhile anyway. Which was another news item that some of you, I think, heard was that some of the, the final piece of good news to many people is, you're going to die. Didn't do any better this time around, did it? <laughs> if you could get outside the system, outside this universe, and you said, all right, intellectually, that is the sophisticated, the civilized world of man goes nowhere, which all the literature, religious and otherwise, is full of it, off into weird directions like uh, vanity, vanity, the all is vanity, and you know, the richest man in the world at the time supposedly you know, spoke. I got all these riches and all the power and all these women, and you know it's dust in my mouth. It amounts to nothing. Which, you no, know, as people like to repeat that, they don't want to try to live it. <laughs> Not that they should, but at any rate, there is this feeling that people will poetically respond to, like my my, at least the, the sophisticated. Somebody in the village, you tell them that, and they say, "You mean you paid?" You know, $10 for a book that somebody wrote that in. You know, come live with us and you'll save a lot of money. You know, they don't have to write it down. They understand, you know, I don't need any riches. I need something to eat. <laughs> but if you're into the civilized world, then you're not wired up. You're not supposed to think that the civilized world's not going anywhere. If you ever think that, as a matter of fact, again, you know this, you are actually becoming unstable. And if it goes too far, you are outside the mainstream of life. You become insane as they call it that is if you suddenly went wait a minute i've worked all my life and i've strained worn myself out ruined my health worked all these jobs got all this money now i'm rich as hell i always wanted to have five million dollars cash i got it now big deal <laughs> got it I've done, my whole life i've done this here i'm about to you know, 
Everybody knows that story. They make movies out of it, and everybody chuckles and says, let's go get a drink. In a sense, the intellectual world is going nowhere. But you can't realize that if you're ordinary. So let's just take, though, for the sake of intellectual argument, that the collective intelligence of man, the area, the world of cows, is going nowhere. It just doesn't. But a cow with a ticket is going somewhere whether it thinks so or not. So as long as you're ordinary, there's no question about whether things are going anywhere or not. I didn't lose you. Let's assume, remember, that things are not going anywhere here. It just goes on and on and on. There's no destination. All right? But if you're ordinary, if you're a cow, that doesn't matter because you think it is. And so if you think it is, it's going somewhere because... If you were ordinary, if we could have it both ways, and you realized suddenly what was going on, there was another news item, remember. That there was once, there was a news item from somewhere else. It said, there was one time a cow who began to understand what was going on. And you realize, well, I shouldn't say anything. I'm just going to run it for everybody else, which is an absolute fact. Because if we could have it both ways, and ordinary, ordinary people understood we all have these plans, and I've been going along as best I could, trying to put up with it, and got my family, and I'm in debt, and the mortgages. It suddenly struck me, this doesn't amount to crap. But if you got the plan, you press on. We're absolutely out of tape. I was going, oh, we are? Okay. Well, for you guys, I'll leave. A man with rats in his mind. It's hard-pressed to be able to find and to put out any kind of efficient traps because, as it turns out, they will all have been designed by the pro-rodent society. That is what ordinary people are left with. Anybody that goes along the ordinary track, that you're trying to trap the mind, trying to cure the mind, trying to rehabilitate, remodel the mind, trying to catch all the rats in the mind. And you think that the mind, you're going to say, what I'm looking for is somebody to help me run these rats out. Somebody for me to shoot the parts I don't care for. And you accept, ordinary people do, or believe that life is going to say, well, here, let me help. 